I think for me, the thing about this show that I enjoyed right from the start when I first read it is is the story, this, the part of the storyline that I'm not even necessarily involved in, but it's the part where um, we see somebody realizing that you know everybody is different in so many ways, but we're all still humans, we're all still the same, and we need to be treated equally and, and realize that nobody is better or worse than anybody else. Kim Huber. What can I say about Kim? She's lovely. We did Seven Brides together uh, in 06, I think. She's adorable. She can sing like an angel. It's so cliche to say, but you can. Uh, she's lovely, and I'm so happy to be working with her again. It's that old devil moon that you stole from the skies. It's that old devil moon in your eyes. I look at you in glory be Something in your eyes I see Soon begins bewitching me It's that old devil moon's one. It's, it's really fast, so everybody has to be on their toes, and everybody is. The system you have going with the costumes and the sets and the, and the interns and everybody working like a clock, that it's so... Not everybody works like this. I mean, the and and the camaraderie and the community about it, and and then the people we get to work with. That you've got to do such a great job of just finding the right spirit of people to be here, and so it, we, it's just home and a wonderful place to be. There's a certain phrase in um, Glockamora that the music just takes me away. It, it's the. Um, so I ask each weeping willow. That, there's something about the longing in that music that just gets me every time. And it, you don't need to act it, it's just there. And also just the whole idea of, of Glockamora, you kind of find out at the end that it's more of an, it's not just a literal, literal home, it's an allegory, it's, it's a dream, it's a place in their heart and, and home. And kind of, you know, I kind of feel that way about Wichita. How are things? in Glockamora Is that little brook still leaping there? Does it still run down to Donny Cove Through Killybegs, Kilcarry and Kildare? How are things in Glockamora? Well, I got my start in the gospel church, in the gospel choir, and I was in a gospel ensemble, um, which led me to a lot of wonderful places. I ended up uh, working with Andre Crouch because of it, which was really great. And then I got into the Young Americans because of it, too, and uh, which was a theatrical group, which got me started into the theater, which I love, love doing. I did a lot of studio recording uh, session work in Los Angeles, and I've worked with people like Madonna, Michael Jackson, George Michael, uh, Gladys Knight. I toured with Gladys Knight for 10 years, um, and Stevie Wonder, man, you name it. I, I've been really blessed and fortunate that way uh, to work with a lot of great artists. The, uh, the thing I like most about the show is the fact that, at least with my character, uh, Bill Rollins, who's the bigoted senator in the show, whom I become, who becomes black, you know, in the second act, which, which is me to understand the plight, you know, of, of, the, of the black people in the social injustice of, of his time. I like the fact that the leprechaun is the person that's pulling him into the reality. You know, it's, it's really cool. It's kind of, I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a fantasy, but it's reality, you know what I mean? It's really great. Lordy, Lordy, how they did the How they did the bigot. When the bigot got to get under par, they bigot the daughters of the D.A.R.s. I'm so humbled to be here. Thank you, Papa. I mean, Mr. Brian. Uh, so, um, I, you know, every show, it is different, and... I, I'm, I love that you bring in such wonderful people that have this real sharing spirit. And it's not like they're above us. They all work with us and they teach us and they share with us. And everybody's so humble in doing that. So I like that it trickles down and everybody's so kind and, and loving and giving and authentic. Because you can see through when people are like, well, I'm trying to be nice to you, you know. I interpret the music as life is a lot simpler than what we make it. 
We want to just have a good time. And then you realize, oh, but I really can't have a good time because I have to pay the bills over here, and then I have to worry about this over here. But if I just lay back and just enjoy the free things of the sun and the moon and just the winds blowing and enjoying life, it's a simple thing. What throws a monkey wrench in a fella's good intention? That nasty O invention! Necessity! Oh, yes, I did plenty of research on leprechauns. I went on YouTube and I watched all of the Lucky Charms commercials <laughs> dating back to the 60s. <laughs> Done. Og, well, he's, uh, he's a leprechaun. You could probably guess that one. Uh, he's a magical creature who is stuck with this plight of becoming a human. And his main problem is that he's suffering from, you know, the worst part of the human condition that we're all familiar with, hopefully, which is falling in love. When I'm not near the girl I love, I love the girl I'm near. Well, I'm blessed with the same kind of wanderlust that I think Finian is. I love to travel. I'm always looking for the hill beyond next hill. And I, I've been an antiquarian for lots of years, too. I've had an antique business, so I'm always looking for that pot of gold to out there treasure hunting. But watching what all of these young people bring to it and watching them work and, and the way that they're trained these days, which is very different from the way that I was trained in this business, and they're so extraordinarily good and well prepared. And it's such a joy to watch them work that I learn from them. I learn. And it's so true. If we ever stop learning, you know what I mean? And, and Finian likes that too. Finian is into that too. So there's a part of me, I think, that's, that's very much a part of him. Yeah. And sort of a rascal. <laughs>